Our entire hemisphere, the Western Hemisphere, is ramping up for war. And most Americans have absolutely no idea what's coming. It is going to hit most Americans out of nowhere when the missiles start flying. They're going to start to ask questions. Why? How did this happen? Who knew about this? See, these are A-4 Skyhawks. They were used in an operation that was conducted in Brazil that I think you're going to find very interesting, especially for the timing of it. Does everyone remember the fake news, non-existent, make-believe caravan invasion story that was basically just put out to influence the election? Well, it wasn't just to influence the election. It was meant to distract. It was meant to keep you from asking, why are U.S. Marines, Brazilian, and Paraguayan forces conducting amphibious assault exercises 1,600 kilometers inland from the sea in Brazil? Yeah, that's right. Brazil, a country with thousands of miles of coastline, conducted a massive, make-believe, simulated ocean amphibious exercise. And that's outlined here on Dialogo Americas. The Brazilian Navy's Fleet Marine Squad deployed to the state of Goiás in central Brazil to conduct Operation Formosa. Read of the Battle of Formosa, by the way, if you would like some symbology here. The largest exercise of the Brazilian Marines training cycle. The exercise brought together 1,700 service members from Brazil, Paraguay, and the United States to the Brazilian Army's Formosa Training Camp, September 21 to October 3, 2018. Coincidentally, that was when the big story came out about the uh, formation of the invasion, so to speak, down in Central America. Operation Formosa seeks to maintain Marines' readiness capabilities. As such, Marines simulate an amphibious operation with the use of weapons and combined assets from partner nation Marines. Although the exercise takes place in a dry climate region, away from the ocean... CIF facilitates the use of land and air assets, as well as live fire. The camp is Brazil's largest training se center. Participants fired about 5,000 shots from various weapons, including the Astros multiple rocket launcher, during 40 missions to A-4 Skyhawk fighter jets, to UH-15 Super Cougars, and two UH-12 Esquio helicopters, 50 tactical vehicles, and unmanned aerial vehicles participated in the exercise. The ocean was represented on a map to guide service members, but training procedures were followed from disembarkation. Quote, all naval power is translated to land. Now, just to give you guys an idea. This is, of course, Brazil. This is how much coastline they have to work with if they really want to simulate a invasion, so to speak. And here is the state of, of Goiás, I guess is how you pronounce that. Here is the little town of Brasilia. It's not really little, but comparatively speaking. And over here is Formosa. The only reason, the only reason you would do this is to keep it away from prying eyes. They didn't want you, or anyone to get eyeballs on what they were planning. Because if they're going to simulate an ocean when they have literally thousands of miles of coastline, that means they have a very specific plan they need to keep very, very secret. See, this exercise only had 1,500. But then November 30, December 9... They actually do use their coastline to conduct an exercise. So one month later, here I'm sure the activities were generic and didn't reveal any specific operational plans. They did the specific stuff inland and here they did the actual stuff because you fight like you train.
basically meaning this. The U.S. is training Brazil and, to some extent, Colombia for the invasion of Venezuela. It's coming. There's more than likely going to be a component that is amphibious, and there's going to be a component that is over land. I don't think it's any coincidence that the leader of Colombia, the leader of Brazil, both absolute psychopaths, nut jobs, complete right wing. <clears throat> and when I say right wing, I don't mean they get up in the morning and they turn on Rush Limbaugh, not that kind of right wing. These guys are not good people. And I really want to ask a question, an honest question of my audience. There's been a lot of talk, a lot of speculation about quote-unquote globalism, about the UN, about the desire for there to be one ruling body, one controlling body over all the world. And it's been talked about to the point of nausea. If there were a country out there that were moving against that grain, if there were a country out there that was trying to throw off the chains of that, that was saying, no, I'm sorry, we're going to operate in a sovereign way, don't you think that more than likely the powers that be, the globalists, would inflict the maximum amount of suffering possible on that country? Don't you think they would ally with their media cohorts you know, the Fox, CNN that totally agree, Fox, CNN totally agrees, Fox and CNN totally agrees on the story about Venezuela. Wouldn't that make a lot more sense to you that maybe <clears throat> this issue in Venezuela where they have food shortages or they have power problems or they have plumbing problems or their ability to uh, pump oil has been compromised? that that might be the result of a coordinated strike by globalists? More so than, oh, evil, terrible, horrible socialism. Oh, by the way, that exists in far greater capacity here in the United States than ever existed in Venezuela. See, you only think you don't live in a socialist society. That's one of the big, and I'll take the hit on this one. I have done a poor job of illustrating to my audience, to Americans, the fact that you already do live in a socialist country. You already do live in a socialist country. This isn't about the Florida Maquis saying the U.S. should become socialist. This is the Florida Maquis saying that the U.S. is socialist. It has been socialist for a very long time. It has a tax system that Marx would be proud of. And literally, everything you do, every move you make, every time money changes hands, I've used the acronym, and I've done it on Patreon, I should have done it here in retrospect, taxed, regulated, approved, insured, inspected, licensed, secured, and subsidized. TRAILS, T-R-A-I-I-L-S-S. -S. I'll say that again. Taxed, regulated, Approved, inspected, insured, licensed, secured, or subsidized. If you can name a part of the economy that one of those doesn't apply to, and doesn't apply with force of law to, please, I would love to hear it. The legal economy. Anything where those don't apply is classified as the illegal underground black market economy. You see, that's the problem. Americans don't realize that all of that foments a certain level of success, and the globalists love it. That's why we operate that way. That's why you don't hear the uh, so-called conservatives anymore just saying repeal Obamacare. They always say repeal and replace. Repeal and replace. They just want their version of government-controlled health care. They don't have a problem with government-controlled health care. They never did. 
but Venezuela is attempting to push back. They're attempting to maintain their sovereignty, and there are military operations going on right now to put an end to this. Operation Formosa, Operation Dragon, U.S. involved in both, and we are in every country down there setting them up for a shooting war. This is just another one from Peru, where they're setting up an emergency center. They're training for it, they're planning for it, and it's coming. Like, share, subscribe.